Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So back on the furnace project today, uh, I've actually uh, been away for a couple of days and uh, we've been letting this thing uh, sit and cure some more. Uh, so now it's been almost two weeks uh, since we did the uh, refractory pour. Uh, in fact, I think it was actually two weeks ago today and uh, we let the, everything set up for a little while. Uh, read a little recap here, we pulled the forms out <coughs> about uh, a week ago um, and uh, since then I have just been letting this furnace sit and I've got a light, uh, just an open exposed light bulb that we've dropped down inside of it and uh, for about a week now we've just had this thing sitting uh, with some warmth in there and the idea is, is you know I don't want to get it you know extremely hot but I can put my hand on here and it's, it's warm to the touch. I mean, it's not hot, but it's warm to the touch. And the idea is, is we're trying to get any moisture uh, that's still in this uh, refractory from when we poured it, trying to get it to evaporate on out. So just a little gentle heat uh, over a period of time, and uh, hopefully we've got this thing dried out a little bit. And it's gonna be a little bit of what's still before we actually fire it for the first time, and probably just gonna keep this in here. Uh, until we fire it the first time. And then there is a process that we go through to actually cure the refractory. And we'll go over that when we get there, but we're still a little ways off from there. So what do we have left to do to this, uh, at least in the short term? Well, we talked a little bit about the hinge mechanism, and that's actually gonna be what we're gonna work on today, is getting the hinge for the lid, uh, where we can uh, pick the lid up, move it out of the way, uh, while of course it's hot and everything. Um, we're also, uh, you know, this area in here, uh, this area in between here and some area on the top here, uh, that's going to be for some insulation. And I've got some high heat or high temperature uh, insulation ordered. Uh, it has not come in yet. Uh, I'm actually doing this during uh, Christmas time. And because of the Christmas breaks and everything, uh, deliveries are a little bit behind, but uh, I'm expecting to get that in uh, fairly soon and we'll go ahead and get the insulation on here and that's just going to be a high temperature ceramic type uh, blanket. We're actually going to use a product called Sarah Blanket uh, that's rated up to about 2400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, which you know the refractory is going to give us some insulation and then uh, that blanket on the outside will be at a lower temperature than the inside of the furnace so that should be plenty adequate uh, to give us some more insulation to keep the heat in uh, to help melt the metal. So anyway, I uh, do want to make a comment, um, and based on the comments that were received in the last video, where we were pulling out the forms, and uh, as you guys saw, we had some challenges getting that inner form to come out, and people say, well, you know, the Crisco trick and lubing up the, the metal uh, didn't work, and you know, actually, I think it, it, it did work pretty good. The problem wasn't so much that the, the metal was stuck to the concrete, but we had that little plywood disc down in the bottom to form the bottom of that form. And the problem was is that uh, when we went to pull that plywood disc out, it wouldn't come up. And uh, you know, even though we tried to get this round, uh, that the inside of this furnace is not a perfect circle. And I think what happened is, is that disc, even though there was a quarter inch taper you know, from the bottom to the top, it just wasn't enough to allow that disc to come out. So in retrospect, you know, should I ever have to do one of these again, which I hope I don't, uh, but if I do, what I think I will do is I will change that plan a little bit. Instead of putting a solid disc in the bottom, I'm gonna make that disc up of several pieces similar to how we did uh, the top here. I'll either do three or four pieces, put them together, cut out a circle, probably put another disc on top of that to give it some stability that's a smaller diameter, screw it all together. I can pull that center piece out and then pull the, the three or four pieces out of the bottom and uh, where I can get them out. And then I think those, that outside form will just come, come right out. So live and learn, uh, you know, if we ever have to do it again, I think we'll do a better job. And if you're building one, I would advise you to take advantage of that opportunity to make your life a little bit easier. So let's get to putting the hinge on and uh, we'll get right back with you. I wanna take a minute here and just kind of go over the uh, hinge mechanism uh, that we'll be using uh, in this build and uh, a little bit about this. So first off, I will tell you, I did not make this hinge. Uh, this was actually built by Charles Marlin, who is one of my viewers on the channel here. Uh, Charles has been following the uh, furnace build and has actually drawn everything up in SolidWorks um, and uh, has kind of been adapting his SolidWorks uh, design as I build the, 
the furnace and uh, we've been communicating back and forth and anyway while we were doing that before I actually got to this part Charles drew up this hinge mechanism uh, in SolidWorks and um, I was going to have to basically design something and when I saw what he had designed I was like wow that's that's perfect so uh, I asked him to send me some mechanical drawings so I could build uh, the part and he said I'll do you one better I'll just build it for you and Charles uh, in addition to being a uh, excellent uh, designer and drawer or whatever in, in solid work. So he's also uh, has a lot of experience in fabrication work and has a nice shop there at his house where he was able to throw this together for me uh, over a weekend or something uh, or during a weekend a couple of weeks ago. And he just put it in the mail and sent it on to me, uh, which was greatly appreciated. It saved me a lot of time. And uh, as I have said before, uh, you know, I'm a pretty good machinist. I'm not that great of a fabricator. Uh, I can do it, but uh, Charles is an expert at it, and uh, he nailed this one on, on the nose. So let's uh, go over it a little bit so you kind of understand how it works. So, you know, what's going to happen is, is that this little flange here is going to weld to the side of the, uh, of the furnace, and uh, it will come up in here. Uh, this piece is just a bearing, basically, for this to rotate on and it goes up underneath the bottom here as like such. There's a set screw hole here. As you see, there's a little recess here uh, for a set screw to go into so it won't come up right here. And that's gonna allow this to rotate uh, on the furnace. I'm gonna pull those parts back off now. And uh, so what you see here, of course, we got this uh, big flange here that the pressure is on. Uh, this is a piece of uh, two inch square tubing uh, in the middle. Uh, he has a 45 in the back and across the top here is solid. He welded that in with some material and uh, basically developed a hinge here. And then we got another piece of two inch square tubing right here. Uh, this will weld, uh, this piece right here will weld right to the uh, edge of the, of the lid. And the idea here is, is that you take, there's also a piece of round uh, tubing in here. What's that, one inch diameter on the inside. That's where a handle will go in. Uh, you lift up on it, that'll pivot the whole furnace lid on there and you rotate it around. And uh, when you drop it back down, it'll only go so far and it stops. It's got a positive stop built into it, so it was not gonna flop down the side. So anyway, that's kind of what we got. And uh, so what we've got to do is uh, this piece here needs to be welded uh, to the, the, the lid of the uh, furnace or not the lid, but the, the top flange of the furnace. And then once that is in place, we'll put this on and then this piece will be welded to the lid and uh, it should all work. So uh, let's get it done. So the first thing we need to do is this, this piece here is gonna be welded on again to this outside ring. And uh, when Charles cut this, it's just got a straight um, cut on there and what I want to do is I want to actually put a, a radius in here to match and this is where it's going to go so I cleaned up the bottom of this uh, piece and I'm just going to kind of hold it in place and uh, uh, get my marker ready here it takes two hands so um, anyway I'm going to hold that in place like such and I'm going to come up underneath the bottom and now I've got that radius uh, marked on there. And I think I'm gonna do is just go to the bandsaw and uh, we'll cut that out and uh, that should match up pretty good when we get ready to weld it. I've got everything kind of fit here together. So the hinge is being held on with the clamp and I uh, got another clamp holding this um, uh, flange on that we're gonna weld on here. And uh, everything appears to be fitting pretty good. I think it's properly set. And I think it's real important when you mount this to get it all on here just like it needs to be and then weld it in place. Um, because if this um, hinge is just a little bit forward or backwards, the lid may not fit down tight on here. But by welding it all together like this, hopefully it's all gonna work just like it's supposed to. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna probably weld, tack this on real good and then we'll take the hinge off uh, and weld it in place real good. And then we'll come back, put the hinge on and then weld the hinge in place. Um, and I'll just have to pull that off just to get good access to it uh, so I can get my weld back up in here all right. So anyway, let's get it done.
So I've got a, uh, this is just a mock-up of a handle. Uh, I may actually use this material, but uh, it's a little bit long. But anyway, basically you come in here, prop that up. You have to get out of the way back here. And that swings around out of the way. Uh, right now it's kind of flopping there. When I tighten it all up, that should hold it right there. And then I can come back in here, swing the lid back over. And we're good so um, looks good another option is is I can put a hook back here uh, on the back side and uh, the handle will come and hook in there and hold uh, I don't know we'll have to see which way to go um, could even put a hook over on this side that catches it about right here but we'll figure that out as we get farther along. But the main thing is, is the hinge appears to be working good. So I'm gonna let this cool over. Also gonna pull the lid off and flip it upside down so I can weld that bottom uh, up under the bottom down here. Just to make sure we got a good weld all the way around it. And uh, we'll finish assembling this and I'll, we'll bring you back in a minute. Well, that's about got it. The uh, hinge is mounted. I got a little shorter rod in here. It's not the right size. And I'm gonna have to find me a piece of, uh, thick wall tubing one inch outside diameter to go up in there and uh, tighten it in place so that it'll be more of a permanent setup but um, all in all it looks good um, the lid uh, picks up hinges uh, it moves very easily uh, as you can see I can move it completely off and let it rest uh, so that I don't think we need to necessarily build a hook uh, if I feel like I need to later on I can Put one on there that I can hook this under to kind of hold it up, but I don't think it needs it. Um, we'll see. But um, all in all, I'm happy with how this works. Charles, your design uh, really works good. Uh, you know, in some of his original drawings, he had a piece of pipe that went from the bottom here to the ground, and I may put that back in there uh, again, just get a piece of thick wall tubing and kind of weld it to the bottom of this and go down to the base. Um, it's not going to be in the way and I think that might give things just a little more stability although you know I don't I think that's plenty solid enough but you know I kind of like the idea of uh, giving this thing as much support as I can so I'm not putting any extra stress on the the refractory in the furnace so uh, I'll probably add a piece of pipe here just as a stilt and uh, then of course the handle and we're done. So anyway, that's pretty much gonna be a wrap on this video. Uh, moving right along. Uh, when our insulation gets in, we'll go ahead and get this thing wrapped. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, may do a video on the burner. Uh, I've got most of that pretty much already put together. So uh, see if we can get that put together for you guys and at least show you the principle of what we're looking at there. Um, but we'll be continuing on with this over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching.